So based on these, we have uh, first actually uh, implemented a Oh, it's working there. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we use this neural imaging finding by understanding better signal. We design a, a system to control a virtual helicopter from their scalp EEG alone. Up to that state of art, the past all the non-invasive brain computer interface system, what could be done is to control cursor, go to left or right, up or down, so it's a two-dimensional cursor movement, or people may try in the th three dimension, but it's just a cursor movement. But in this case, uh, we design a system that provide a real-time interactive, you know, a uh, control and a task that is a, uh, there's a virtual campus of University of Minnesota, there's a virtual, and helicopters, a virtual ring being generated that, Goal is we ask a subject, okay, don't move your body, but just by imagining part of your body to steer around this virtual helicopter to go through the virtual ring but with a goal that you should not hit at the ring, but, you know, do a fine control. And that is uh, once you go through and the computer is going to reset, generate randomly another virtual ring and subject and they're going to go through and uh, over again. So this is uh, one of the work we've done several years ago and a quantitative analysis of this work is that we look at a four human subject, about 1,000 trials of their fix of these um, BCI control, together with the same four subjects using keyboard control to fly, to navigate the virtual helicopter. This is the 500 trials average. You can see that the keyboard control and with the BCI control, which is a fairly consistent and between these two groups of the trajectory of, of the control, which you show and the quantitative analysis result. So after this success, we've been moving forward and say, uh, well, can you really control flying of the real helicopter? Certainly not a big helicopter, but a, a small one, right? <laughs> Otherwise, I can commuting and every day don't have to pay the gas bill. But, um, so w what we do is actually we... Uh, we uh, we apply the same technology and it's motor imagination and uh, th now it's in the gym of their bigger gym room in the University of Minnesota. There's a real ring and a real model helicopter. Um, and then the subject is, uh, this is, uh, the subject actually is, happened to be my PhD student because we, we study, uh, we did the work, we get a paper accepted and their publisher told us two weeks before publication, said, we want to do a press release. Do you have a better video? We said, well, all the subjects are gone. They are students. They graduate. Then I have to ask around. I say, okay, any guys in the lab, do you guys um, want to give it a try? And then this particular subject, that was his third time in his life to experience controlling flying this quadcopter. And it happened to be actually so... There's no statistics, it's, it's random, but uh, on the other hand, people do not need too much learning and to pick it up. And what uh, this slide just uh, show, uh, uh, this video just uh, show is uh, some of the video being taken um, uh, in responding to that uh, publisher's uh, request for the press release. So you can see that uh, uh, subject uh, just wearing an EEG cap, uh, imagining moving left hand to turn this uh, quadcopter to left, you're imagining moving the right hand to turn that to the right. We set a forward going velocity. So if you do nothing, this will go forward because otherwise this is it's a huge gym. And then if you imagine moving both hands, it will go up. If you're imagining nothing, it will go down. So you have a four and three degree of freedom and we're set up the forward going velocity of course what about if you want to go to back then you needed to go forward take a turn and come back like you're driving a car you you, you don't have the function to, to back but you have to take a turn so that is basically is this work and shown all we learn from this EEG brain mapping work to optimize our system and to demonstrate for the first time in the world that non-invasive brain computer interface is able to control a real physical device, actually, uh, of course, uh, my I, I, ideal case is control a 
you know, robotic arm help in your prosthetic patient, but we have to test in healthy subject first.